Hello, and welcome to section B of this rheology course. Section B concerns the study of viscoelasticity. I'd like to give you a little bit of motivation as to why the study of viscoelasticity is important, to give you some examples of viscoelastic materials, and to give you an outline of the next four lectures. I'd also like to include in this introduction some short videos of some typical viscoelastic flow phenomena that you should be aware of. So, let's think about viscoelasticity. We see viscoelasticity in all areas. We see them in man-made materials and we see it in natural materials. And typically in both of these situations we can link it to the presence of polymers. Polymers in solution or polymers in a melt. If we think about a lot of engineering materials they are polymeric in nature. Polystyrene injection mouldings for casings of various electronic items extrusions of nylon machined into various engineering parts like cogs and gears, or extruded polyethylene or polypropylene for consumer plastics. So all these materials are highly viscoelastic. The thing about polymers is that they have a stress memory. Their state of stress is not just linked to the deformation that's happening to them at a point in time. They can remember stress from a whole history of deformations. Now, if we have a polymer not being actively deformed by a machine but that has stress memory, let's think what that stress will do. Stress we can link to force divided by area and so there's a force present in effect which of course is going to drive an acceleration which means that once we've stopped deforming a viscoelastic material say with a machine it will still continue to flow and sometimes distort in ways that we might not expect. There is a second thing that polymeric materials exhibit, and that is the direction in which the stress exists. For most materials, we would expect the stress to be in the direction of the deformation. I mean, by definition, that's how a Newtonian material behaves. However, in a polymeric material, we will also see that stress can be exhibited normal to the deformation direction. These final points, these two points, the stress memory and the presence of normal forces, are responsible for a large variety of very unexpected flow phenomena in viscoelastic materials. I'd like to explore the concept of normal forces a little bit more because it might be a little counterintuitive at first. Let's remind ourselves what a Newtonian fluid does in shear. So here is a simple cube of fluid. I'm shearing it. I might be, for example, driving it along a pipe with a pressure. And as I apply that pressure to make the Newtonian fluid flow, it's going to shear and experience a shear stress. There we have tau yx on the y face in the x direction. However, that's the only stress that's exhibited, a stress that is in the deformation direction. Now, if we were to do the same thing with a viscoelastic liquid, we would see that shear stress. But it's not the only stress that we would see. Because shear would involve the extension and rotation of polymers, those polymers, when they extend and rotate, can also apply stresses. And some of these stresses will apply, be applied in directions normal to the direction of motion. And so in my cartoon here, I've added on x-direction stre stresses on the x-face, y-direction stresses on the y-face, tau xx and tau yy, respectively. You could also have tau zz, z direction stresses on the z faces, all when the deformation direction is just simple shear flow. And so this will give rise to the polymeric liquid moving in all sorts of ways that we might not expect from just a simple shear flow. And I'll give you examples of this in the videos that follow. Viscoelastic materials really are everywhere. They're in nature, they're in engineering, you're wearing them they're on your kitchen shelves. So the picture I've put on my blackboard is of a pitcher plant. These pitcher plants are native in many, many tropical and subtropical parts of the world. And some pitcher plants have highly viscoelastic liquids in their pitchers. These are carnivorous plants. They trap insects as part of their metabolism. And the idea here with these pitchers is that ants slip into the pitcher of liquid. But that viscoelastic liquid affects whether or not that ant is able to escape. So as the ant struggles, what you find is a liquid forms strands against any limbs that go away from the liquid surface and draws them back in again, which is a viscoelastic effect. And so viscoelasticity here has evolved to supplement the nutrition of these plants. You also see 
viscoelastic liquids in the animal kingdom. Any solution of polymers, carbohydrate polymers, DNA for example, will be viscoelastic. And viscoelastic mucus is an essential part of slug and snail locomotion. Moving back into the man-made world, we've already discussed how printing inks have to be tailored very carefully to get nice crisp print. And a lot of this is around tailoring the levels of viscoelasticity that's present to suppress droplet breakup in flight. You are probably wearing a viscoelastic material right now. Many man-made clothing fibres, probably all man-made clothing fibres, exhibit viscoelasticity to a greater or lesser extent. So when, for example, nylon or polyester is spun from a spinneret in the melt phase, it will be a viscoelastic liquid. And so as that thin fibre of material is spun out of a nozzle, it will deform. And because thread, particularly clothing thread, has to fall within quite fine tolerances, we need to understand how that material deforms in order to get effective clothing thread. So, a quick outline of section B. Now, sec lecture six of this course is going to give you an example of how we model viscoelasticity. We're going to introduce to you the differential Maxwell model. We're going to be using the Maxwell model a lot, but we're going to be using it in different forms. So in lecture seven, we're going to change differential Maxwell to integral Maxwell, and we'll motivate why we do that in lecture seven. In lecture eight, we're going to adapt Maxwell to describe real materials, and we'll find that we need to use many Maxwell models together in order to do this. We're also going to explore different types of physics that we can add to our Maxwell model to describe certain types of material behaviour that a simple Maxwell model just won't capture. Finally, in lecture 9 of this section, we're going to be having a look at how we form general expressions for the flow of viscoelastic materials. So, let's look first at some of the interesting and unexpected flow phenomena of viscoelastic liquids. In this demonstration, I am pouring a polymer solution, polyethylene oxide, in water and propentuol from a jug into a bowl. Note how the liquid continues to flow even when the liquid level, shown in blue, is below the level of the spout, shown in yellow. The reason for this is normal forces caused by the drag of the polymer against a glass surface continue the flow of the liquid long after the Newtonian liquid would have ceased to flow. Imagine this in the context of designing an overflow to a tank that contains a polymer solution. In this demonstration, I'm sucking liquid into a syringe. However, I can continue sucking the liquid into the syringe when the entrance to the syringe is above the liquid level. Again, normal forces allow the liquid to continue to flow in this situation. When bubbles rise in a viscoelastic liquid, they form a teardrop shape. Here, what we have is a spherical bubble initially, but as the liquid flows around the bubble, the normal force increases and pinches the trailing edge, hence forming a teardrop shape. Another characteristic behaviour of viscoelastic liquids is extradate swell. Look in this demonstration where the liquid jet is of a greater diameter than the exit from whence it has come. This is because normal forces relax as the liquid exits the orifice and this relaxation of normal forces causes the jet to change shape. The Weissenberg effect, or rod climbing, is a very powerful demonstration of viscoelastic nature. In this demonstration, I have a spinning rod in a reservoir of fluid. We can see the fluid is wicking up the spinning rod ever so slightly. Now, this is a fairly mild demonstration of the Weissenberg effect. However, if we change the polymer system to polyvinyl alcohol and water, we can see a far greater Weissenberg effect. Imagine as the rod spins, normal forces are created that forces a liquid up the rod against gravity. 